I'm supposed to capture the atmosphere and excitement of watching the game in a typical jam-packed English rugby club bar. Hi guys, my name is Lois and we're here with Fan Carpet this evening. We're at Empire Leicester Square and we're at the premiere of Breakfast with Johnny Wilkinson. So you were a key member of 2003's World Cup final. You were the only player to play every single minute. Does it feel like 10 years ago to you? Does it look like 10 years ago to you? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it, it does feel like 10 years ago. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot's happened in those 10 years. And uh, I think life is about taking opportunities. And in particular in sport, it's definitely about taking those opportunities. And obviously we, we, we were able to do that 10 years ago. And, uh, and therefore, you know, tonight we're here celebrating one of... England's greatest sporting, uh, you know, moments. You know, everyone can remember where they were 10 years ago. Um, I was having some conversation on Twitter today with fans saying, you know, where were you 10 years ago? And some of the answers were incredible. You know, all over, all different places, all over the world. Some were in the stadium, some were back here at home watching on telly, some were hiding behind the sofa because they couldn't bear to watch. Um, so no, it was uh, it was an amazing. And sports got that ability to really bring the country together, and yeah. none more so than that particular night. Yeah. Tell us about your role. I play Jake, and my, I guess the most stand out sort of important thing for me with my character is that he has this connection with Johnny, where he's sort of modelled himself as Johnny Wilkinson, and has, whether by chance or not, has formed this connection where every time Johnny goes and takes a kick, he goes and takes the exact same kick outside, and if he scores, Johnny scores, and if he misses, Johnny misses, and that's his sort of uh, that's become a superstition that then wends its way into the story quite nicely. So Nina Ritchie is the captain of the women's rugby team. Um, she's quite, she's tough. She's, there's something that comes up in the film where she has a past history with some, another member of the rugby group that are there. Um, so there's some tension there. Um, but she, and she's always getting grief about rugby and women's rugby. So she's got a bit of a chip on her shoulder about that, but she loves her rugby. My character, Lena, Lena is, um, she's a nice, girl she's just had some bad um, relationships in the past she's a little bit a little bit sort of gun shy when it comes to men and she she meets this young young uh, guy and they just have this really 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 incredible pure connection so that's kind of where their whole romance starts she's she's trying so hard to save her business which is how she's been roped into this ridiculous setup in the first place. She's being blackmailed basically to be there and seduce this kid. Um, but she's 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 a good person. She's not she's not a jerk. You played in the original West End production, Breakfast with Johnny Wilkinson. How did it differ filming for a movie compared to the West End? Well, and the only similarity between the movie and the West End really is that a lot of the script remain the same. But obviously when you put something on film you have to make it filmic, so there are a lot of ideas of how to do that. And I know from having had a sneak preview of it that both the director and the producer have done a wonderful job of making it very filmic. So it's not just sticking a camera on a play, it's a proper movie for you to have tomorrow as the movie release date? Yeah, I think it's uh, a brilliant day to do it on. Um, uh, everybody remembers where they were and what, uh, what happened that day and um, as it sort of as we went into making the film, we went st didn't start out thinking that's the day to release it on, but you know, we finished the film and there it was, staring at us and thought, perfect. Will the film differ from the original successful West End play? Uh, Yes, yes it does, it differs a lot. I mean, one of the things, one of the ways in which it differs is because we have, um, it's a group of people watching a game on a, on a big screen in the theatre, that big screen was above the audience's head and, and kind of the action is all imagined. Um, but here, you see it and it's and the, the rugby players are like characters in the play, you know, Johnny Wilkinson is like characters in the film, I mean, and, uh, and uh, Lawrence Delalio and Clive Woodward and those. You see, you know, things that, things that we had to describe on stage because you just couldn't, you just couldn't uh, make it work with all the footage and you couldn't get the footage apart from anything else. Um, now you can see it and so it's a huge new element actually, a, a huge sort of step forward from, from what the play was. 
What was it that drew you to the story? I think it was it, the script made me laugh. It was it's really it's really lovely to have a script that makes you laugh out loud as you read it. And I just love the idea of these people all in the one room, all sort of hitting off each other, hitting at each other. Um, yeah, a real sort of confined environment. Really, I mean, the more simple the boundaries, the more complex the dynamics can be, and that's that's what it was pretty amazing things for charity so you cycle from Greece all the way to Stratford and you raise over two million pounds pretty awesome where did all this start um, well through my own experiences in life um, I was lucky enough to have you know quite a big support system around me that allowed me to make good choices in my life to uh, get myself on track uh, and to ultimately be successful I guess um, and I think you know setting up the Delalio Foundation part of me wanted to help other people to really Realize those ambitions to have that support system around them because the difference between those who are successful and those who aren't is tends to be the help and support that we get either from our parents or those close to us so you know that, that's something I'm very passionate about working with young kids through the power of sport through the power of rugby to um, you know help people to make you know improve their lives why should people go and see this movie um, if you like rugby, it's a bonus, obviously. Um, but if you don't like rugby, there's some, there's just some really nice moments. It's a really warm-hearted film. I think it's got a really big heart. Um, it's just about normal people who love their game and have big dreams and aspire to big dreams. So I think that people can relate to it. And uh, it's not going to change the world as a film, but it's a really nice little film, and um, I think it's really good fun. So it's not going to appeal to just rugby fans. It's there's a lot of, um, as it says, I think in the thing, there's sex, the supernatural, and something else. Um, uh, there's a lot. There's love interest storyline. Um, there's a sort of a father son type thing going on. Uh, there's lots of different elements that you get in a lot of films that you see. So there's a lot that people can relate to. You don't have to like rugby. I think it's a real um, feel-good film. I mean, I think uh, you know, you, you, it's got elements in it that you would have in an, in an ordinary uh, uh, comedy, which are you know, the relationship things, uh, romantic things. Uh, there's a little bit of sex in it, if that's what you like. And um, uh, there's, a, there's a sort of political struggle for power going on in the rugby club off the screen. Um, and all of that is the, the, are, the, are the elements of a comedy, is, uh, if you like. And then on top of that, you've got the game. You've got the, the World Cup final, which which builds to this fantastic sort of upbeat ending, which and so everyone should come out of it with a big smile on their face, you know, because it, it builds to essentially victory, and not many things offer you that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it won't be just rugby fans that will be going to see this. No, it shouldn't be. No, I mean, I, I think it's it's done in such a way that because um, I myself am not uh, I'm not as big a fan of rugby as I am of say football or of, of cricket, and the ins and outs of it um, are. And the character that I that I play on the screen um, comes into this club uh, ostensibly, ostensibly to observe it uh, for a, for a newspaper, and is and is uh, say all the rugby reporters are in Australia watching the game, so I don't know anything. And then generally I write about football. Generally, you know, I don't know anything about yeah. rugby. So they all it, it all has to come through, you know, from from a point of view of people who don't uh, know rugby, or don't like rugby. It comes, you know, my character is on your side, you know, when you see it through my from my point of view. When I came out from seeing it the first time, I came out with a massive smile on my face. The movie's got a heart, and you care about the people in it, and it makes you smile, it's very funny, and I think you come out feeling a lot more cheerful than when you went in, so come along for a good ride. It's a laugh. It will make you giggle, and I think that's important. I, I haven't seen, you know, I don't. I guess uh, like a lot of films that you really kind of are drawn to necessarily are those that are quite heavy, perhaps. You know, you kind of know that you're going in for something. Where with this, there's all that in there, but it will make you laugh. So I think go see it for a laugh. This film has a lot for the rugby fans out there, a lot. But even if it's not your bag, there's something for everybody. It's, it's, it's just a really fun romp with seven characters who are just the most motley crew, the most bizarre bunch of people all stuck in one rugby club. I don't know, it's a bit of fun. It's character, character study. Well, my daughter likes it. She's a 16-year-old girl who likes catch, you know, who likes the uh, um, catching fire or whatever else is around it. So, um, no, and my wife likes it. So I think it's, a, I think it's a film about people and uh, uh, rugby's backdrop, if you like. Yeah. But it is about how we all get so excited and invested in things which we're not really there for or a part of, but matter to us somehow.
We're here and we just saw the launch of uh, yeah. Xbox, which is in Leicester Square, and it's, it's a bigger launch than I've seen for movies, so that's why everyone's got to keep coming to the movies. Well, because it's fun. Uh, it's um, you know quintessentially English, British movie. Uh, it takes a bit of a mickey out of itself, as English people do. Uh, we have a bit of a crack at the Australians, um, as obviously the English people do. And you know what? You don't need to know much about rugby or anything about rugby to enjoy the movie. You, you know, it's a short movie. Uh, it's fun. Uh, it's very relevant, obviously, because we're on the 10th anniversary today, tomorrow, yeah. and uh, you know, hopefully, people might you know might enjoy it. The most important day of my whole life and the telly's broken! Bloody hell, what a win.